Hello and welcome to this lecture on the base matrices in the 5G new radio standard. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned, the 5G standard uh, specifies parity check matrices for LDPC codes using this base matrix and expansion method, except that there are two base matrices and several possible expansions. Okay. And the base matrix itself is quite large, it is not a very small base matrix. In my example, I showed you a 3 by 6 base matrix the base matrices in the 5G standard, there are two of them, one is 46 by 68, the other is 42 by 52, okay. So, it is quite a large uh, base matrix, okay, uh, 46 by 68 and 42 by 52, okay, quite large, okay. And the base matrices uh, have a very useful structure, okay. So, even though they are large, so it turns out you can carve out some small matrices from them and uh, these matrices have a very, very easy structure. So, in particular, there is a block structure, okay. So, they have a block structure like this, okay. The first block is A, uh, first row block is A, E and O and the second row block is B, C and I, okay. So, in the base matrix uh, 1, the first base matrix B, G 1, A is a 4 by 22 matrix, E is a 4 by 4 matrix, O is a 4 by 42, all 0 matrix. So, so when I say all 0, I uh, should be careful here. So, it is actually all minus 1s, remember, okay. So, so in the base matrix, it is all minus 1s. So, so, it gets replaced by, you know, when you expand, it gets replaced by the all 0 matrix, okay. So, B is uh, 42 by 22, it is much larger, right. So, 42 by 22, C is 42 by 4, okay. And uh, the I part is actually an identity, 42 by 42. Uh, it will it will have an identity structure. Okay, so I'll show you the some examples uh, later on. Okay, so this block uh, picture is very important. The first uh, row block uh, usually is dealt with separately in the encoding part, and the second part is uh, dealt with separately. Okay, so it's important to know this uh, block difference. Uh, BG two also has a very similar structure. Okay, so remember BG one is forty six by uh, sixty eight. So you can see uh, four plus forty two is sixty forty six. And then 22 plus 4 plus 42 is 68, okay. And the base graph 2 also has a very similar block structure, uh, A uh, 4 by 10, 4 by 4 and 4 by 38 and then B is 38 by 10, 38 by 4, 38 by 38, okay. So, easy enough to describe the standard goes into details on what these uh, each of these things are. I will show you some, uh, some pictures next to illustrate how this looks, okay. So, how does the block look? This is how it looks. This is my A part, okay. This is B G 2 by the way. This is uh, E, this is O, okay. So, you can see O is like the empty part. So, this is, uh, okay, I should tell you how I got this picture first. So, this is a visualization of the base matrix. Uh, what I have done here is minus 1 is ignored, okay. If the base matrix entry is minus 1, I have just put space there. I am not, not showing it because it gets replaced by all 0, okay. 0 to any other value, 0, uh, 1, etcetera, right. I am showing as a dot, okay, the blue dot. That is the visualization just to show you how the structure looks where the non zero values are. So, you see this A part is fairly dense, okay, a lot of uh, non zero values. E is also, E also has a very peculiar special structure, it is called the double diagonal structure, okay. You can see if you come in and see closely, you will see E has one main diagonal and an off diagonal, right. So, you can see the main diagonal and the off diagonal, this is the double diagonal structure in E. This is all, all 0. So, there is nothing in this, I mean all minus 1s, all zeros. okay. And then you have the B part, which is uh, this big part and then, uh, oh, what did I call this? C, which is this uh, long rectangle or small part and this is the identity part and you can see this is just diagonal and in fact, all these entries are zeros, okay, as in they are replaced by an identity. So, overall, even after expansion, this will be identity, okay. This will be all 0 after expansion, okay, the top O part will be all 0. So, this is how the matrix will blow up, okay. So, so, even though like I said, this is a pretty big matrix, it is 42 by uh, 52, you can sort of stop here if you like, you know, for instance, you can do this, okay. 
So this small part is another base matrix. You can ignore all these other things. You can sort of puncture all these things out. You don't have to evaluate those parities. Only use this part of the base matrix to transmit your code word. Okay, you can do that. That part, that sort of thing is called rate matching. So you can you can choose to do that. In fact, uh, the first two message blocks are not transmitted at all in 5G. Okay, they're always punctured. These two guys are always punctured. Okay, so so I don't want to spend too much time on uh, the rate matching and all these things that happen in 5G. I, I want to focus on the LDP C decoder first and then maybe in a later lecture I'll point out uh, how the rate matching actually works. So even though this whole parity check matrix is very big, you can see this large identity part allows you to just cut off wherever you like. Okay, So you can get smaller base matrices and uh, different rates quite easily from this uh, matrix. Okay, So, uh, so like, I, like I mentioned, I'm not going to spend too much time on thinking about uh, rate matching uh, in this in these lectures, uh, but but it's good to know where they come from. Okay, so this is how the matrix looks. The entries themselves uh, are uh, very different. I'll show you some of the entries in in a few examples in the later slides. Okay, so hopefully this is clear. Uh, if you go to the standard document, there will be a clear description of how to construct these base matrices also. Okay. Okay. So now, what about the expansion? Okay. Now the expansion, uh, the base matrix I told you has size 42 by 52, uh, 46 by 68. Okay, that is the base matrix size. Okay, now uh, there is there is something called index, which is ILS in the standard. It's just a way to uh, number the order the expansions. And then there are two factors here which control the expansion. There is a factor called A, and then there's a factor called J A. And the expansion is A into 2 power J for J going from 0 to J. So there are a lot of expansions possible. So if you look at A equals 2, it corresponds to expansion of 2, 4, 8, 16, right, all the way up to 256, right. So 32, 64, 128, 256, right. So this is, uh, this corresponds to uh, j equals 0, this is j equals 1, all the way up to j equals 7. Okay, so those are all the expansions possible and you can figure out where the largest uh, will come from. It, it turns out the largest expansion is 384. Okay, So this is just given to sort out all the expansions. Now for every base matrix and for every expansion, there has to be, uh, the, you have to fix the values. Okay, You have to specify what the values are. Okay. So, for each ZC, the base matrix values are specified. They take values from minus 1 to ZC minus 1. Okay. All right. So, let me repeat this once again. For each expansion factor defined in this fashion, there are a lot of expansion factors like I mentioned. For every A, you have to multiply with uh, 2 power J, J going from a certain range. And so, you have a lot of expansion factors. And for every expansion factor, you have to specify the standard clearly specifies what the base matrix entries are. Okay, So, you have to look at the standard document and figure out what the base matrix entries are for each expansion factor. So, in short, given a base matrix and given, given a base matrix and given an expansion factor, you can find out the exact entries in the base matrix from the standard description. Okay, So, that is something you can write a program for if you like, uh, it is possible. So, I am not going into the details of how that specification happens in the standard. I will encourage you to read it on the standard document. I will provide a link for that uh, as part of the course material. You can go look up the definition. There is a lot of detail there. Uh, we will skip that, but I will provide the base matrices themselves for every possible base matrix, uh, base graph 1 or 2 and the expansion factor. I will give you the base matrices directly. So, you do not have to uh, do that. But nevertheless, it is good to go look at the description and figure out how the base matrices are specified in the standard. Okay. Okay. So, here is an example of a base matrix. Uh, so, I have not shown the entire base matrix here. The BG2, if you remember, is 42 by 52. I am only showing 10 rows and 20 columns. Okay. So, after, after this, below this and to the right of this, there are a lot more entries in the base matrix. I am skipping all that. Uh, this corresponds to ILS equals 3, J equals 4 and uh, ZC equals 48. So, this will correspond to a, uh, a some A value, I believe it is uh, uh, 3. Okay, So, I think this is A equals 3, right? so 3 into 2 power 4 is 
uh, 48 okay so this is how the entry looks so zc is 48 so the base matrix entries will go from minus 1 0 all the way up to 47 okay so you can see there's a 47 here there's 26 36 46 all sorts of entries here and uh, and so what i've shown here is the e part the matrix e and uh, this will be the o part this will be the a part and all that I, I, I'm drawing some special attention to E here I'll tell you why and then you can see the identity part coming here right so this is the identity part okay so you can see the 0 along the main diagonal and then minus 1's throughout remember 0 gets replaced by the identity matrix so overall after expansion you'll get an identity matrix here this O will be a big 0 here okay and then these entries are all all over the place okay so I mentioned this double diagonal structure in E's right so this is diagonal this is diagonal everything else is 0 and then this also has a peculiar uh, sort of uh, form okay so you will have this uh, 1 minus 1 uh, 0 1 so this 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 plays an important role uh, later on we will we'll see that in the encoding it, it will play a role okay so we will come to that when we see it okay so uh, so this is how it looks right I mean there is nothing much more uh, to talk about here so these things are specified uh, precisely in the standard and like I said we are not going to see the full description but this is how the matrix looks for any other case uh, the entries are specified you can go find them and write it out and look at it very closely you will get numbers like this uh, the only uh, part is this E part I, I will urge you to look at the E part in everything and this first column will also have a peculiar structure so, so later on uh, I will talk about why this is true, uh, why this is useful, this double diagonal structure. So, this is uh, sort of useful in encoding. Okay. So, this structure is useful in encoding, this double diagonal structure. Uh, I will I'll mention that later on in a lecture. Okay. So, this is uh, some one example, I think. This is the last slide. Uh, what I want to do uh, is uh, show you. So, I promised uh, that I will show you the base matrices themselves. So, here is a folder where I have written a program to generate all the base matrices in the NR standard. So, you can do that and then, uh, then this is just written down here for uh, every single possible uh, J and ILS and then I am just going to show you some of the base matrices uh, that, uh, that are there. So, you can pick anything else. So, for instance, let us say we pick this one. So, it is a rather large uh, base matrix, uh, maybe I can blow it up a little bit, I'm not sure if how visible this is. Okay. So, like I mentioned, I have uh, I have written a program to look at the standard and then uh, pull out all the base matrices and uh, so this is all the base matrices as text documents. Uh, so, let us pick out one such base matrix, this has got an expansion factor of 208 and uh, you can see how the matrix looks. So, this is uh, the base graph 2 once again 42 by 52 and you can see the, the dense part here with A, B and C and the E part here right and then the long identity part here and then the all 0 part here okay. So, so this is uh, this is how uh, uh, the base matrices look and, and you, you could uh, write this as well uh, but I am I'm not sure if for this class uh, it is it's so crucial for you to uh, you know write uh, the piece of code for generating these base matrices. So, what I would do to help you out is to provide the base matrices themselves. So, I will create a Google Drive folder and share it on the course page. You will get access to all these files and uh, you can look at the base matrices and pull out the base matrix for uh, any particular specification. Like I said, it is not a big secret, it is there in the standard except that you have to read through and write a small piece of program. Uh, to create the base matrices I am helping you out there with uh, providing the base matrices myself okay so the main focus of this course is on building decoders for these codes okay so like I said how do you uh, make a decoder how do you uh, describe and write down code MATLAB code for a decoder for these uh, kind of parity check matrices like I said this is just specification of the parity check matrix uh, from here how do you build a decoder okay so that is going to be the main challenge as far as this course is concerned and let us focus on that uh, mostly okay so instead of worrying about how to create the base matrices okay so this brings me to the end of this lecture uh, so uh, from the next lecture onwards we'll start looking at decoders for ldpc codes okay thank you very much